Hey guys, it's Eric with the Film Photography Channel. Let's take a look at the Pentax ME Super SE. So this is the Pentax ME Super uh, with the SE uh, moniker on here. It's a, SE stands for Special Edition. It was just a uh, an offshoot of the Pentax ME Super and it only is available in silver like just like this one uh the sc the me super was actually available in the black body which also looked gorgeous the regular me was an automatic model the me super picked up the manual mode with these two clever little buttons that they put on here to control your shutter speed and uh, it also picked up the uh the shutter speed range from a full four seconds metered up to one two thousandth of a second so it's it's really handy for you know bright days it allows you to, to use a larger you know aperture openings to get that nice out of focus background uh, in the broad daylight uh, the emmy super sold from 1980 through 1986 it uh, it followed the trend of olympus uh that released when they released the uh, om series of cameras uh they they seriously downsized uh, the slrs of that day and uh, Pentax um, you know among others followed that trend but Pentax really took it a step further they actually made this one a little smaller than Olympus's uh, OM series and when I'm referring to the OM series I'm talking about the OM single digit as in the OM one two three four and the offshoots thereof okay just happen to have a an OM two here to compare it to all right and you can see there, it's uh, they're pretty comparable in size, but the uh, ME Super is just a little bit smaller. It's uh, the body's a little bit shorter. It weighs 440 grams without a lens, or the Olympus weighs just over 500. I think it's like 520. Olympus is a nice light, compact camera as well. I mean, it was the standard bearer for years um, before you know Pentax and others started uh, imitating, or you know developing their own compact SLRs. Olympus is definitely like a system camera. It's got, you know, just tons of professional accessories available for it. A huge assortment of lenses. Pentax also has a huge assort assortment of lenses. They don't have quite as many, uh, you know, accessories. And, you know, today, does that really matter? If you're a film guy and you just want to take pictures with a nice film camera, you're, nobody's ever going to buy all those accessories. So that that's really a, a moot point at, at, at this day and age. But uh, back when they were selling these cameras, I guess it was a bigger deal if you were a, a real professional photographer this actually was a professional camera. They also increased the uh, viewfinder ma magnification. It has a huge viewfinder. The viewfinder is actually uh, bigger than uh, a modern full frame DSLR viewfinder. It's, I mean, when you look through there, it's just massive and it's nice and clear. It's got a uh, non interchangeable focusing screen uh, with a uh, split prism that was actually diagonal um, versus the, the regular horizontal one that, that all the other uh, ME's and the M series cameras had. It has a flash sync speed of 1 1 25th, which is also the manual um, shutter speed. So if your battery dies, you, or there's no batteries in there, the shutter will still fire at 1 1 25th of a second, um, you know, even with no power. So you have a, you do have some kind of backup. Right, uh, so let's take a nice close up look here at this absolutely gorgeous little camera. I mean, if you, if you look at it, it barely has any square edges anywhere on it. It's There's contours everywhere. The bottom plate, you see the nice little contours in the, on the bottom plate there. Uh, even these corners aren't really corners. Or, you know, everything's kind of beveled and chiseled and and uh, just, you know, really, really nice um, uh, shapes going on here. It is a nice looking camera. And it feels very, very solid in the hand. It doesn't feel like a cheap, uh, you know, prosumer camera, if that's a word. Um, it feels like a, you know, just about as well built as uh, my Olympus OM-1 or any one of my Nikons, for for uh, example. All right, so looking at some of these buttons, bells, and whistles, let's get the basics out of the way. You've got your your uh, uh, self-timer. And as you can see, all you do to, to start that bad boy, you just kind of push it up there. There's no second button to, you don't hit the shutter release to activate the, the self timer. Just kind of push it and get it on its way. There's your uh, flash sync uh, port right there. Um, 
film rewind and the film rewind doesn't have any locking mechanism or anything like that you just kind of pull up on it and here is your uh, exposure comp dial so for exposure compensation right here Pentax uh, they kind of make it a little comp more complicated than it has to be they they kind of call it 1x and 2x instead of you know one stop or two stops uh, and then they give you a fraction like a one half or whatever you know for your for your exposure comp all right so uh you can see the dedicated uh ttl flash uh socket or, or shoe there with a little extra contact for for that film advance is great it's a nice short stroke and it's very smooth uh, you know really really smooth you know about as good as uh like say an olympus om series or a nikon fe or something like that it's not on the level of the f3 I haven't uh, used another camera that, that has that s as smooth a uh, film advance as a Nikon F3. But again, this is a nice, smooth uh, film advance. All right. Um, the uh, the back, and I'm going to get to this in just a second. The, the back here has a really nice thumb rest, and it's got your your little window where you save your, your film tab, you know, the, the end of the film box. You just pop it in there to remind you, uh, you know, what's uh, what's in there, what type of film you've got in there. All right, and to the bottom here, um, this is your uh, your the little uh, hatch for your for the available winders. Pentax has a couple of uh, winders, uh, winder one and winder two. Uh, they do one and a half and two frames per second, and you know they have a, they give you a grip for bigger lenses and and the button on the grip. Um, I don't really mess with the winders that much anymore. These winders for these older cameras just you know sometimes they'll waste film and kind of go off on their own you hit it once and then they'll they'll pop off three or four frames it's pretty infuriating so i, I, I stopped uh, buying the winders i got rid of the only one i've got is the olympus winder and it actually does that you know so you know you 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 can go just fine all day and then uh you know you hit the button once and then it'll pop off three or four frames and you're like, oh my god anyway uh, film rewind release button as you can see a metal threaded tripod socket this is where your battery goes this is the contacts for the for the aforementioned winder where's my focus there it is and then just a little hole right there to line up the uh your your film you know automatic film advance unit your winder okay um beautiful glass look at that nice bluish coating on this Pentax SMC-M 50mm 1.4 and I, I've been buying uh, 1.4s with my cameras now or I have been for, for a while now. The 1.4s generally are just like the best 50 that they make. This is a nice alternative to the K1000 and, and they're pretty much in the same price range so if you're thinking about a K1000 you might want to take a look uh, at this. The overriding most um, relevant and important reason that you would want this camera or any Pentax came out camera is the glass. Okay, Pentax lenses are just absolutely phenomenal, sharp, contrasting, beautifully rendering uh, lenses. You know, obviously they're not the only ones. Nikon makes great lenses. Olympus makes some great lenses. There's a lot of companies that do. Pentax is among those companies that make some of the best lenses that, that have ever been made. So if you're a fan of Pentax glass and Pentax lenses, um, this is the, probably the number one reason that I would get uh, the Pentax ME Super. Soon after uh, developing this camera and, and releasing this camera, I should say, uh, they, they released a, a series of Pentax M lenses. And the M, I don't know if it stands for miniature or micro or whatever, but it's, they're smaller lenses suited for the body. Now, if you look at this lens, it doesn't look all that small, but this is a 50mm 1.4. Uh, the 40 millimeter 2.8 was pretty common to come with this camera. Our 50 millimeter 1.7, 1.8, I think, or I think it was a 1.7. It, you know, they're uh, and the f2, classic 50 millimeter f2 that you would see with the K1000 and with this camera as well. That would be the the lens that you would typically get. I like to get the 1.4s. They generally don't cost a whole lot more than the like the f2s or the 1.7s and. And it, the 1.4s, I find it's always like the company's ultimate expression of, you know, of their their standard lens. You know, they usually have more lens elements and are coated nicer and just really rendered nice. And this lens does not disappoint. It is a very uh, 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 sharp and, and uh, contrasty and, and it does everything right. Very easy to use. It's fairly close focusing. Looks like uh, half a meter. 
So it's like a foot and a half that uh, that it'll focus to. And the uh, lens mount, as you can see right there, this little release here. This is how you release this uh, this K-mount lens, you know. And you've, of course you've got your little red dot like all these lenses do. And then the corresponding red dot on the lens. But uh, Pentax also has this big white dot there that, uh, you know, if you can't really see the red dot or if you're in a hurry or if you're, you know, whatever, it's just a whole lot easier to to line up the white dot with the lens uh, the lens mount release right there. Okay, so you line those two guys up and it pops right on there. You can, you can literally do it in the dark because you can feel that dot pretty easily. And, of course, this, this is pretty pronounced as well. Um, so that I don't even know why they bothered with the red dot to be honest because that's a much easier and I'm sure anybody who has these uh, Cameras for any amount of time. That's probably how they do it um, Okay, so what you don't get uh, in this camera you don't get depth of field uh, preview you don't get an exposure lock Okay Yeah, you don't get an expo you don't get an exposure lock. It's got a limited ISO range from 12 to 1600, which isn't really all that great. Um, you simply half press your shutter release to wake up the meter. And then you actually, when it's in the auto mode, like right there, all you have to do, is, since it's an aperture priority camera, you just rotate the super clicky Pentax, uh, ap you know, aperture dial on your lens here. And uh, it'll tell you in the viewfinder, uh, on the left side of the viewfinder, you're going to see a row of LEDs corresponding with each shutter speed. And I'll show you a picture of what the viewfinder looks like. All right. So that's pretty typical aperture priority function. You set your, your aperture and it'll set the shutter speed. That's pretty, you know, pretty standard, very easy to use, very convenient. Now, if you want to use this camera in manual mode, you press the button there, click it to M. And a couple of things will happen. When you put it in manual mode, as I look through the viewfinder, I'm going to see uh, an indicator next to the M. There's an M on top of the 1 2,000th, which, which is the top shutter speed. So on the left side of the viewfinder, you've got from 4 seconds, which they, they, they uh, mark as 4S, right on up to 1 2,000th, which is uh, your fastest shutter speed. So above that... You're going to see um, overexposure to let you know, obviously, if you're overexposed. And if you are, you're going to get a frantically blinking red LED to let you know you're overexposed. Same thing for underexposure. Below the four seconds, you're going to see a uh, under, the word under, and, and a frantically blinking red LED to let you know that you're underexposed. So when you're using this camera in manual mode, it's, a, it's not the most intuitive because what you've got to do is kind of um, you chase the whichever LED is blinking. So if you're overexposed and you're at the shutter speed, you know, you just kind of figure out um, how to how to make that LED stop blinking. You know, you, you, you chase it up, whether it be through shutter speed or shutting down the the uh, the aperture ring or whatever you need to do until the LED stops blinking. And just the opposite. If it's underexposed, you're, you're basically chasing the LED. And if you have proper exposure, it doesn't really indicate that it'll let you know what shutter speed you're using you can't see the aperture inside the viewfinder but it says it just kind of stops blinking and um, uh, speaking of the LEDs one thing I forgot to mention here the the when you're uh, using the exposure compensation dial there's a uh, marking on you know above the all the shutter numbers and all that the the very top marking is that actually says EF for exposure factor that will start blinking which is a little distracting because you think something is wrong but i guess it's good that when you're using the exposure factor uh it'll it'll start uh, blinking to let you know hey you're using exposure compensation i don't know why they didn't name it uh ec but they just call it exposure factor instead of exposure compensation and i don't know why it's blinking when you're in manual mode i don't know why it does that maybe there's just no way to to unhook that when you know uh, also, when the batteries are low, all the LEDs will start blinking. Obviously, when the batteries are dead, then nothing lights up in there. Batteries last forever. This um, meter turns itself off after about 25 or 30 seconds. You can forget to, to turn it off altogether, and the meter will be completely off. Only time you may have a problem if, is if you have it in your bag or something, and the, the shutter may be constantly getting hit, or half-pressed at least, and that may wear out your batteries, but 
if it's sitting on a shelf or in a drawer somewhere, these batteries will last like five years. So that's a good thing also. The one criticism that I have is, is that is those LEDs just don't really stand out enough when you're doing something wrong. I, I almost wish Pentax would have made like a, put like a huge LED on the top or bottom to let you know, hey, warning, <laughs> you know, big warning, you're overexposed or you're underexposed. Um, the LEDs, okay, so the LEDs are from 1 30th down to, to the 4 seconds, they're all amber LEDs. Under, over, M, and E, F are red LEDs. The anything above anything above sixty seconds is going to be a green LED to let you know that that is a hand holdable speed. It's not as intuitive or as easy to use as a um, as a needle. I'd much rather just see a needle in there. I mean, you know, it's the eighties or LEDs are becoming the thing and. And, you know, I understand what manufacturers were doing. I mean, the cars had the little dumb speedometers that just told you, you know, you're doing 40 miles an hour and it with no, you know, no reference as to, you know, how quickly you're getting there or, you know, or whatever. It's just like a, you know, like a moment in time. It's like you're doing 40, right? This camera will tell you just that. It'll say, you're, okay, you're at 160th. That's it. I'd rather see that needle approaching, you know, 160th. It's going to go over. It's going to, you know, it's just... um a whole lot more intuitive to have a needle for me. Um, this camera has a great uh, feeling shutter. You just half press it and the meter will activate for about 25 or 30 seconds. It's All right, a couple more things here and I'll show you the control hub, let's call it. This is your wiggle window. This window has these little lines in it that kind of vacillate and kind of wiggle back and forth when the film is properly advancing. There's no film in there right now. So, you know, when you advance, now you're not going to see any anything but uh that normally they'll just wiggle around a little bit um uh, that's actually a tiny little window right there to let you know uh, that the shutter is cocked so when it's red the shutter's cocked as you know you press you see how it goes to black and then when you advance the film then it goes red again just amazing technology all right so let's open it up here and let's look inside and see the craftsmanship. All right, it's an all-metal shutter, not titanium. Uh, and, and again, the the this shutter uh, can go to one two thousandth of a second. This uh, film rewind is not ratcheted, so if you if your finger slips off of there, it's just going to do a massive rewind. While you, and and more than likely, it's going to uh, slip off while you're rewinding your film. Um, the this uh this little system here works really well it's just uh you know it's just a series of of bars here that as you can you can see they kind of tighten themselves up around the film so you don't have to line up with a specific gap uh, there's just multiple gaps here that are really easy to to load up the film i mean there's a lot of systems that are pretty easy to load this and this is just one of them um it's it's a Good idea, though, the, the way they did it. Uh, uh, loading the film on this camera is, is extremely easy. Um, as, as easy as, you know, any of the, the best uh, systems that I've used in the past. And the, I'm showing you the, the shutter mechanism there. Let's see how that looks in action. I've got it in auto, so it's, it's hunting for light right now. There's two issues with the meter. So the, the first one, and uh, the one that I've, I've read a lot about, is... The, you'll have like these crazy bouncing LEDs that that are just you know kind of randomly jumping around. That's an issue I understand with the contacts, electrical contacts. It can be fixed by dropping a couple of drops of rubbing alcohol uh, in there and then uh, just kind of working the exposure compensation uh, uh, wheel here until until uh, that stops happening. And there's a lot of folks that say, yeah, that fixed it right away. But the more uh, widespread issue with the metering is that this camera seems to be pretty easily fooled um, in, uh, in a, like a high contrast situation. You know, like if somebody's like really backlit, they got the sun behind them, you're going to get like uh, just a, a blacked out shadow, you know, of your subject. Where other cameras like, um, like for example, the um, uh, any anything with the 
Nikon matrix metering, for example, or in the Olympus, uh, I've never had that problem with. I really haven't had a problem with, with just about any of the cameras that, I, that I've got. Um, but for some reason, I don't know why, why it is, this camera seems to really be fooled in these high contrast situations. I, I had a couple of frames, um, and it was just a couple, like two or three at the most, that, that uh, just were completely unusable um, from the last roll that I took with, uh, you know, with this camera. I, I read a few articles uh, for, uh, from people that actually had this camera, you know, 25, 28 years ago and had that same issue back then. So I don't think it's a, it's a uh, issue of the camera being old or worn out or anything like that. Cause uh, you know, it, it, apparently that's just how, how it's designed. Um, for example, um, there's a wall lamp over here behind the camera. So what I'm going to do here, just for a quick comparison, I'm just going to put the, the wall lamp right in the middle, right where the split prism is, and let's just open it up to 1.4, and we're using ASA 100. All right, I would think it's like a 1/30th or something like that. Let's put it in auto mode. Uh, yeah, and it's telling me 1 250th. 1 250th of a second. Same thing with the Olympus, putting the light in the center. So the Olympus is telling me 1 60th of a second, which sounds a whole lot more realistic. Besides just that, that obvious thing about the metering system, uh, this is a fun, fun camera to use. I love the size. I love the little thumb grip. Love the glass. Pentax makes some great glass. This is a really nice camera to use. It's, it's super easy, especially in the aperture priority mode. Uh, you may have to look out for those uh, that one frame or that you may miss. <laughs> tricky lighting situation but overall it's a really fun camera to use um so i guess that's about it guys you know it's not perfect but uh you know neither is a porsche 911 all right guys thanks for stopping in hope you got something out of this uh, review um please like and subscribe hit the little bell icon if you want to be notified when i upload a new video and go out and get a pentax emmy super SE, even.